I wonder what kind of story it is today. I wonder if it's an old story or a new story. Any thoughts? An, an old story? A new story? A middle story? <laughs> you think it's both? Both. Both. Well. both story because it's actually written in 1986 <laughs> way before any of you were born so it's sort of how could it be written when nobody was born <laughs> None of you were born. I was born then. I was already old by then. And some of these people were even older. <laughs> anyway, this the whole the whole theme today, and I think um, you'll find out when you get to children's church, is about celebration. And this book is one of my favorites. It's called I'm in Charge of Celebrations. And this is about this is about uh, a young girl, and her name is Desert Girl. Isn't that a funny name? And I think her name is Desert Girl because she was born and lived in the desert. And and she's a girl. Yeah. So so desert. Desert boy probably wouldn't make very much sense, and 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 probably ocean uh, girl wouldn't make very much sense because of the desert. But but uh, anyway, let's have a look at this at this story. And and um, uh, this is great that that you're all finding some space here because the pictures are fairly small. But I'll make sure that that I show each of you the, the pictures as we go. So. Sometimes people ask me, aren't you lonely out there with just desert around you? I guess they mean the bear grass and the yuccas and the cactus and the rocks. I guess they mean the deep ravines and the hawk nests in the cliffs and the coyote trails in the wind across the hills. She's going to be hot there, isn't she? Lonely? I can't help laughing when they ask me that. I always look at them surprised. And, and I say, how could I be lonely? I'm the one in charge of celebrations. Sometimes they don't believe me, but it's true. I am. I put myself in charge. I choose my own. Last year, I gave myself 108 celebrations, besides the ones that they closed school for. That's a lot of celebrations. I cannot get by with only a few. Friend, I'll tell you how it works. I keep a notebook and I write the date and then I write about the celebration. Otherwise, I counted just an average day. I told you I was choosy. Friend, I wish you'd been here for Dust Devil Day. But since you weren't, I'll tell you how it got to be my first real celebration. You can call them whirlwinds if you want to. Me, I think Dust Devils has a better sound. Well, anyway, I always stop to watch them. Have you ever seen a Dust Devil? Some of them. Yeah, sometimes sometimes the wind gets like a little like a little tornado, a little tiny tornado about the size of each of you. And and it swirls around and it picks up dirt and sometimes sticks and little stones and it and it moves around. Right through it. 
So, you know how they come from far away, moving up from the flat, swirling and swinging and falling and turning, picking up sticks and sand and feathers and dry tumbleweeds. Well, last March 11th, we were all going somewhere. I was in the back of a pickup truck when the dust devils started. You could see they were giants. You'd swear they were calling their friends to come too. And they came, dancing in time to their own windy music. We all started counting. We all started looking for more. They stopped that truck and we turned around and around, watching them all. They were, there were seven. Seven dust devils. <clears throat> you see them? Yeah. And there's the truck. <laughs> it is, isn't it? At a time like that, something goes kind of crazy in you. You have to run to meet them, yelling all the way. You have to whirl around like you were one of them. And you can't stop until you're falling down. Can you imagine just spinning around like a dust devil until you got really dizzy? And then all day you think how lucky you were to be there. Some of my best celebrations are sudden surprises like that. If you weren't outside at that exact moment, you'd miss them. I spend a lot of time outside myself, looking around. Once I saw a triple rainbow that ended in a canyon where I'd been the day before. I was halfway up a hill, standing in a drizzle of rain. It was almost dark, but I wouldn't go in because of the rainbows, of course. And there, at the top of the hill, a jackrabbit was standing up on his hind legs. Can you see the jackrabbit? See the jackrabbit? Can you find it? I may be the only person in the world who's seen a rabbit standing in the midst, quietly watching three rainbows. Have you ever seen three rainbows at the same time? I've seen two. I've never seen three. That's worth a celebration anytime. I wrote it down and drew the hill and the rabbit and the rainbow and me. I have green cloud day too. Ask anybody and they'll tell you clouds aren't green. Have you ever seen a green cloud? Yes. But late one winter afternoon I saw this huge green cloud. It was not bluish green or grayish green or something else. This cloud was green. Green as a jungle parrot. And the strange thing was that it, it began to take on, on a parrot shape. Can you see kind of the parrot shape in the cloud? First the wings and then the head and beak. High in the winter sky, that green bird flew. It didn't last more than a minute. You know how fast a cloud can change, but I still remember how it looked. So I celebrate green clouds on February the 6th. At times like that, I always think, what if I'd missed it? What if I'd been in the house? Or what if I hadn't looked up when I did? You can see I'm very lucky about things like that. Can, yeah, can we just back up a little bit so everyone can see? Because these pictures are kind of small. And I was lucky on Coyote Day. Because out of all time, it had to be one moment only that a certain coyote and I could meet, and we did. Have you ever met a coyote? No, I know, but I can see one right there. Mm. Friend, you should have been here too. I was following deer tracks, taking my time, bending down as I walked, kind of humming. I hum a lot when I'm alone. I looked up in time to see a young coyote trotting through the brush. She crossed in front of me. It was a windy day, and she was going east. In that easy, silent way, coyotes move. I stood there, hardly breathing, wishing I could move that way, too. I was surprised to see her stop and turn and look right at me. 
She seemed to think that I was just another creature following another rocky trail. That's true, of course. I am. She didn't hurry. She wasn't afraid. I saw her eyes, and she saw mine. That look held us together. Because of that, I never will feel quite the same again. So on September 28th, I celebrate Coyote Day. Here's what I do. I walk the trail I walked that day, and I hum softly as I go. Finally, I unwrap the feast I brought for her. Last time it was three apples and some pumpkin seeds and an ear of corn and some big, soft, homemade ginger cookies. <laughs> the next day I happened to pass that way again. Coyote tracks went all around the rock where the food had been, and the food was gone. Next year I'll make it even better. I'll bring an extra feast and eat there too. Another one of my greatest of all celebrations is called the Time of Falling Stars. It has almost a week, it lasts almost a week in the middle of August, and I wait all year for those hot summer nights when the sky goes wild. You can call them meteor showers if you want to. Me, I like to say they're falling stars. All that week I sleep outside, I give my full attention to the sky. Have you ever slept outside at night? No. Have you? No. I have too. It's amazing how many stars are up there. Have you seen a falling star? Anyone? I have. Yeah. yeah. And every time a streak of light goes shooting through the darkness, I feel my heart shoot out of me. One night, I saw a fireball that left a long, red, blazing trail across the sky. After it was gone, I stood there looking up, not quite believing what I had seen. The strange thing was, I met a man who told me he had seen it too, while he was lying by a campfire 500 miles away. Imagine. He said he did not sleep again that night. Suddenly it seemed that we two spoke a language no one else could understand. Every August of my life, I'll think of that. Friend, I've saved my New Year's celebration until last. Mine is a little different from the one most people have. It comes in spring. To tell the truth, I never did feel like my New Year's started January 1st. <coughs> to me, that's just another winter day. I let my year begin when winter ends and morning light comes earlier, the way it should. That's when I feel like starting new. I wait until the white-winged doves are back from Mexico, and wildflowers cover the hills, and my favorite cactus blooms. See the flower on the cactus? That's when I feel like starting new. I wait until the white-winged doves are back from... Oops, I did that. It's always, it always makes me think I ought to bloom myself. <laughs> And that's when I start to plan my New Year's celebration. I finally choose a day that's exactly right. Even the air has to be perfect, and the dirt has to feel good and warm on bare feet. Usually it's a Saturday, around the end of April. I have a drum that I beat to signal the day. Then I go wandering off, following all of my favorite trails to all of the places I like. I check now how everything is doing. I spend the day admiring things. If the old desert tortoise I know from last year is out strolling around, I'll go his direction a while. I celebrate with horned toads and ravens and lizards and quail. And friend, it's not a bad party. <laughs> Walking back home, kind of humming, Sometimes I think about those people who ask me if I'm lonely here. I have to laugh out loud. <laughs> Lots of celebrations in there, isn't there? I wonder what some of the other 108 celebrations might be. Any idea? A birthday party? 
Valentine's Day. Yeah, you don't get school off for that one, do you? Well, yeah, that was written in 1986, so she could have 365 celebrations by now, couldn't she? Yeah. I think every day is worth celebrating. So we're going to sing a song, um, which is totally appropriate, seeing as we've been in the desert for a while, called Like a Healing Stream. And um, we'd like you to stay and, and sing this with us, and, uh, and then you can follow the camp about to Children's Church. Um, what number is this? 144 and more voices. And I'm going to ask you to do this with this song. Uh, the, the, the composer of this, Bruce Harding, uh, told me that the best way to do this song is uh, to think about it in terms of the sound of each of the kinds of water that are described. So we're going to start singing really gently with the healing stream, and then a little bit stronger with gentle rain, and then um, a little bit stronger again for the river strong, and then finally for the mighty sea, as loud as you can manage. And at the end of the song, as each of those words is repeated, we're going to come down softer and softer back to that healing stream. So, like a healing stream. <laughs> 